you cannot be driving in the right direction then arriving at the wrong destination. <laughs> we are being mentored by people that don't run businesses. You fire all the business lecturers and see if they are going to survive on business. Those guys can't survive on business because they are surviving on employment which they are teaching people that they should start businesses. My full name is Abel Hangoma. The farming name is Radical Farmers. My life would be very miserable without farming because farming is something that has come to perfectly fit in for the reason that I exist for. So it is one thing that I enjoy so much and I wouldn't want even to imagine my life without farming because there's nothing that I enjoy more than farming. So it is something that actually makes my life to be whole and it gives me a reason to exist. Farm 7 was started by me, then my wife joined and um, we were other workers also that have come uh, to, be, to be part of Organic Farm 7 and um, there's one of uh, my friend who actually helped me when I, was in, uh, when I was in college, he helped me with the camera which I used to raise money to go to, uh, to, to university. So he's going to be a shareholder, he's coming to be on board, he's an accountant by, by profession. Organic Farm 7 is a limited company, it's not a sole uh, trader, but it's a limited company, uh, limited by shares. So we have shareholders in this um, company, um, whom we are working together and we have other workers also. So mbutuwa holo nga mwari mu November 2020 kubolo guno. Mtuwa holo guno laifi gui taliga mburi hivo kutaliga laifi mbi hivo mburi uti nja nyowani. Amna incho weni ya gari ya nyowani laifi mtuwa holo guno kamba oti tuwa gulanga kusowe. Unyina chonga wajita landi ya gaena tiali feta o. Unyina gulivo mabwe aliki aliki. So mbutuwa hopu. Kala, batibalo, uli ndi megu saidi, tinda ajisi lusho mbutinga, mbo inga yavo umu, bati uli balo gusaidi wavo, bali hichibari guyanda gujita. So, anda hole kabota, mbueno uvo atu indiri. Kwa yogu saidi wangu, jaho ndi pa ute guanda ambe uta, andi za ndunke po uli ba maminkambo ka uti, o guno hevoni future ili onsi, kunyina nchendi vona haa. Jipati chituari ujita utegwa tuzwidi hile usiga wano, kujita bo sacrifice, mari ngitu ajisi. Sometimes andiza, obobuzi wata mjisi busu, olo omwe, olo saladi, andiza taigo, unyina jagulia, bati, tuari ukala, utegwa tuwone, utegwa tuvike mari mfamu, utegwa hintuga hiyabu ya gumbele, instead of uguri ya bo mari, tuwabo na utitajigo tuguashu. It's a farm that started from the backhead. Uh, I learned how to work with the resources that are within my reach. So because of the desire and the love to eat healthy food, I started uh, farming and I wanted to do it organically from the backhead. So I cleared out the space that was like a five by five. From there I would plant different types of vegetables and the fruits that I could grow, it was only strawberries because they don't occupy a lot of space. So, and from there, my passion for farming actually grew. By profession, I'm a computer engineer, but the love and the passion and the satisfaction that I was getting from farming was beyond what I was getting in, in doing IT. Not really that IT is a bad thing, but to, to me, it wasn't working out as it should. So that's why I decided to be a full-time farmer. But before I decided to be a full-time farmer, I had to gather knowledge. I have to practice the little knowledge that I had. 
I had to learn how to work with small spaces before I learned how to work with uh, bigger spaces. Then I learned how to monetize my skill in terms of the information that I had, the products that I had, and also the services that I would offer. So I learned how to monetize those things from the backyard. And I reached a level whereby I was making eight times more money from the backyard than from the salary that I was actually earning on a monthly basis. So when I reached that level, I said, now I'm ready to go. And um, with the money that I had, I started investing slowly in the farm. First, I, I, I bought land and I was paying in installment. So if you look at farming, it has been done the usual way. Uh, and as Radical Farmer have come on the stage to change the narrative and also redefine things, that's where now we have started doing farming the unusual way, whereby we are questioning things that are not helping farmers and we are setting up new things that are actually helping farmers. We are developing philosophies that are actually applicable in our situations because it's the practices that are applied in, in North America may not be applicable in Zambia. And if we don't uh, innovate solutions that are solving our problems locally, then we are going to be in problems always and blaming people and all those things. But I don't want to be part of those people. I want to be part of the solution. Sinto jipati chendi jita olo hindu hindi jita umuno mufamu itegwa organic farm seven. Nga kupanga tu essential oil, totu gusha guma plants ngo tu jisi. Muli lavenda, muli lemon grassi, muli sente geranium, amna aambi ambima plants. Oyo e iya lavenda ganji mbo ibelega, wani ila ibelega gungonzi. Uh, for example, to jisi ngonzi, mm, na to jisi ngonzi, inga wa, wa iweza, watubi katu oyo, amna wa rabinga. Ologumu tuwe so, wa i rabinga, gute gowea ngonzi. Kamba oti lavenda, njishi goja lavenda na lavenda planti, ilaverega gu insomia. Na gota jisi ngonzi, ilaverega gutina wa inua. So, tuwa jita discuss, utatwalo tu oyo, gutina wa tunana. Olugumenso amubili inga wabatulo tubo tuwalimu kutinako jisima rush ilaberega oil, ilaberega kuskin kutegwa ibonege fresh amna ibonege kabotu. Amna himbi hindalimu oil inga waibere shanako jisiju kolo kolo. Waibweza wa, wa, wagasa hatu menda amna wadropping abotu tushonto bomu menda a, 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 agasala ndeni wanua. I'm not a general with me chest in my room, my Julie. Organic Farm 7 is in the valley um, behind the hills of uh, Kafue. Stones are everywhere, the soil, as you can see, is gravel. But we've learned how to work with any kind of uh, situation, any kind of soil. We started with three hectares, then we kept on increasing. And right now we've got more than 40 hectares. But we have developed and um, set up irrigation on a six um, hectares where we've planted fruits, vegetables, um, as well as um, herbs on these uh, six hectares. And as we grow, as we keep on improving this small portion, then we are going to keep on expanding because we realize that people are buying out land and having portions in different locations is quite very hard to manage. But when you have one big one, then it becomes uh, super easy to manage and also expand. My name is Norman Chileka. I'm 26 years old. I come from Lusaka, Zambia and currently I'm here in Kafiwe. My start in Organic Farm 7 is quite interesting. I'm a teacher by profession, so I was in the teaching industry, physics, but uh, when I heard about organic agriculture, I thought I should take a turn and uh, learn more about it. One interesting thing that I have learned from Organic Farm 7 is how soils can be built, no matter the place, no matter the location, 
Uh, when I came here, I was shocked to find that Abel is farming in rocks. And this was quite very interesting. And when I had a hands-on experience with a pick to the ground, actually I found out something rocks, but the soil is very gravel. But we, he managed to build the soils to, to be very good textured. And um, from that, I learned that there is nothing like poor soil. Every soil can be built. And now Africa can be changed. Africa is full, is full of deserts, the, the Sahara and the, the deserts in, in Botswana. There is hope for all those places because if we go the, uh, the organic way, we can build soils in, in such a way that agriculture can be done everywhere. The secret is building the soils. This is worm cast, which we are planting. We are planting, it's like we are planting earthworms into the soil. And right now we've got quite enough rains, which means that we are going to actually build the soil quite very well. During rain season, that is the time that we, we work on the soil in preparation for production. Like we start planting around March um, up to December, then three months, December, January, February is the time to rejuvenate the soil and also grow the vegetative crops that we use to rejuvenate the soil in terms of holding moisture, uh, retaining nutrients so that we can be able to produce the whole, the whole year healthy um, food. The fertigation system that we have here at Organic Farm 7. So the different kinds of plants that we have here are there is alfalfa, there is comfrey, there is moringa, there is tithonia and there is milk thistle. When we bring them in a bulk of 50 kg, we put them here and then we let them decompose in a drum for 14 days. So this actually decomposes and makes um, very wonderful foliar fertilizer at the end of the day. In line with fertilizers that are destructive, what we are doing is um, we, are, um, we are making organic fertilizers that are environmental friendly, very cost effective and long lasting and at the same time sustainable. In terms of pests, pesticides that are destructive to nature, what we've done is we have started using nature to solve the problems of pests like plants like aloe vera, you talk about neem, you talk about herbs which repel pests and the flowers that attract beneficial insects, the mulch that attracts lizards and snakes so that they can control certain rodents and as well as certain type of uh, pests. This is a water reservoir and it's one of the first structures that Mr. Hagoma made when he came here. So they actually made it um, physically with the first workers that were here on the ground. And it is one of the oldest structures that we have here. It keeps a huge amount of water. We've got tanks, but the water reservoir does a very powerful job here at the farm. In terms of power, we are using solar and we are able to pump water. We can even pump up to um, even a million liters in a day. There's just a way we've learned how to work with nature to solve the problems and we are 100% on gravity in terms of um, irrigation. Times of the rain season it becomes extremely very hot, hence um, evaporation is quite very high but we've been working on that in terms of creating more organic matter but at the same time also building the soil capacity to hold nutrients. So my point is you see we need water quite a lot and um, 
it's not just a matter of wanting water but also utilizing that water effectively so we've been working on doing that so now what we have, what we've done is um, we've innovated our solar panels in such a way that we're able to get maximum utilization of the panels as you can see these panels they swing and get water as early as possible then that gives us um, an advantage over many people that actually don't have their panels swinging like ours because i've been working with solar panels for five years now and i've come to understand how they work effectively so this is our source of water this is part of being very climatic smart and at the same time also this is very economical so this is our banana field and uh, one thing to notice here is how heavily we have mulched this place this place has been heavily mulched with sun hemp stock. And that's why we did this, is to have a lot of organic matter to build the soils. And also, bananas require lots of water. So the amount of water that we get, we accumulate it, so that it can, we cannot lose a single liter of water. And this field only has about um, 150 bananas. But Mr. Hangoma has been able to make over 100,000 in one year from this field. We call this place our powerhouse. This is a powerhouse where, where the money is made from, the economy of Organic Farm 7. So this is a raspberry and this is in the greenhouse. So almost all the plants that we have outside are brought into the greenhouse to be propagated, ready for sale. So there are different kinds. So there's always a session. So like right now it's a session of the raspberries. Once they are done, we'll have to clear up all this and bring in new kinds, new kinds of crops. So the advantage of this is that almost everything that comes here in the greenhouse, the mother plants are outside there in the, in the fields. The mother plants are there, then we bring them here, they are propagated. Once they are ready, we take them outside where there is more sunlight exposure so that they can be ready for sale. You need to control the economy of, of your farm. Number one, you have to control the, the inputs. So no wonder we grow comfrey and tithonia so that we can use them to make our own fertilizers. For pesticide, we use neem. Then for fungicide, we use aloe vera. So the cycle is completed. You have what you use to feed the plants. You have what you use to control the pests. My approach is to make sure that I invest in the right direction. I put my resources in the right direction because I'm not building a one day farm. I'm building a farm for generations. It's a farm that is going to stand the test of time.